We're going to take some power measurements of the amplifier before the waveform starts to distort. Right now, I'm reading an output of uh, 10 volts RMS. So 10 times 10 divided by 8 gives us 12.5 watts coming out of this channel. Now, the channel is advertised for 35. We'll see how high we can get. I, I've, I've been up there a bit, up to uh, 16, so I've got about 32 watts. So let's see how high we get before the waveform starts to, uh, to form. I'm going to slowly ramp up the input voltage and let me bring it down just a bit and we're at 16 right now and that's 16 times 16 divided by 8 is 32 watts now let's just bring it up on a on a smaller scale and see when it starts to distort and you could already see that the tops of the the waveform are flattening out so you've already exceeded it just from a visual perspective, where would we be? I guess about there at that point. And that's 16.4 is what I'm seeing. This isn't, you know, precise science here, but but I mean, it, it does a pretty good job to do 16.4 times 16.4 divided by 8 equals, we're getting 33.6 watts out of that channel. Not bad at all. So there you go. We're, we're, we're at about maximum power power output right now. Here's the other channel. I got it up to 16, so about 32 watts. We'll see how we could get before it starts to distort up. We're already there, 16.4. We already see it distorting. So that was the same for this channel as it was the other channel. We'll call that good. That, that's peak power production. Dial it back. There we go. 20 hertz does fine at uh, 14 volts RMS, which comes out to 24.5 uh, watts out of the channel. But as I slowly ramp it up, it, it will distort. That was just me hitting the settings. It will distort at a, at a much lower power than... than uh, um, you can already see the top of the, uh, the waveform is already sort of has a, uh, a jagged edge to it. So it's already starting to distort. And that's at 14.4. And we have 40 hertz, and I'll, I'll split that back out so we can see. 40 hertz is fine at 14.4. And we could probably crank it up and see at what point we start to get some distortion. I think I think it's relatively... You could just, actually you could just see the top of it uh, starting to distort right there. You can see 400 is not distorted at all. We'll crank up the power. You can see we're at 15, 15, 6. So now we're 32 watts. And yeah, and it's starting to, to plateau on top there. Let's well, it's been over 40 years, so I figure we might as well actually get started. This is what I've done. I have the oscilloscope connected to the right channel of the amplifier. It's currently up and running and warmed up. I have the switch pushed to mono. I have the channels coupled into my iPad over here. I have not a great, but a suitable 8 ohm speaker. So the 8 ohm speaker is connected to the left channel. The oscilloscope is connected to the right channel. I've asked my wife to graciously play some chords on her guitar. I think it'd be cool that'll be the first thing pushed through the amplifier in 40 something years. So I've set up all the levels. I have everything ready. The first thing I want you to notice before I begin, though, is that there is no hum at all. I'm press the microphone right up to the speaker. I'll stop talking for a minute. No hum at all. So here it is, officially, the first song running through the amplifier. This is my wife, Stephanie, doing a rendition of a couple of chords on an acoustic guitar which I have to also say is acoustic. That means I just kind of had the iPad sitting there recording it. This is not like the uh, guitar was fed right into a uh, into the iPad or an amplifier or something like that. So there's some ambient noise. Here we go.
Wurden darunter zwei Kinder. Wie es zu der Detonation kam, ist weiter unklar. Die Polizei schließt eine Familientragödie nicht aus. Auch ob die vier Menschen noch vor der Explosion in ihrer Wohnung durch Gewalt starben, ist noch offen. Die Leichen sollen am Montag obduziert werden. everyone. Here's a Donnykit Stereo 70 that I got from my friend Mike, who got it from his brother Pat. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Pat. Uh, I don't know how long it's been in storage or how it was stored. The only saving grace that allowed this amplifier to survive is the fact that there is no power cord. It's chopped off and broken at the base. Uh, it's pretty safe to assume that if you could plug something like this in, the magic smoke would come out. Farmers in the power transformer. Now these may look bad, but I've often seen them look like this. And they do stand up. They can be uh, uh, cleaned and then uh, repainted, just like new. Obviously that would not be replaced. However, if you were going for something like this, this sort of effect, you could put the, uh, leave that can there after it was cleaned because it's aluminum, so it will polish right up. And you would put the new capacitors under there. Capacitors have gotten much smaller since then. But here's how it looks without the tubes. There's the tubes right there. The bottom is kind of frozen in time.